Hello, and welcome back to my kitchen. This is Linda, and we're going to make a little cake for Valentine's Day. So, to get started, we're going to, this is a um, box of lime jello, a three ounce box, and we're going to use two of those, and in this bowl right here, let me get my hot water here, we're going to, um, I'm going to add two cups of hot water. There we go. And I'm going to empty two packages of this lime jello into the hot water and dissolve it. Ooh, that smells good. Nice and limey. I'm going to stir it up just a bit because we want to get it dissolved. And then we're going to add, <clears throat> excuse me, a cup of cold water. Cold water, and let me get that real quickly. Now we're just going to take this bowl and set it aside for right now. This is just one of the steps. So I'm going to take my bowl and set it aside. Now we're going to get started on the cake. Now you're going to begin with a cake mix. Now I've chosen this white cake mix and I already put it in my bowl in my mixer over here back off and you're gonna follow what's on your box of um, the box your cake mix came in and that's what you're going to add to this, but we're going to enhance it. So it calls actually for one and a quarter cups of water. Mine does. Make sure I get this right here. All right, it calls for one and a half cups of water. It calls for either three egg whites or three whole eggs. 
Well, I, you know, if you want a pure white cake, then um, you're going to have to use just the egg whites. I really, it doesn't matter to me if it has a, a light color to it. Now preheat your oven to whatever your box of cake mix says and go ahead and grease and flour a 9 by 13 cake pan and I'm using the the mixture that I made up to um, that grease and flowers in one step so I've already done that and uh, my cake mix calls for a third of a cup of oil so let's get that done And my cake mix box says three eggs or three egg whites. Well, I'm going to use the whole egg. So there's one. Two. three all right now this is where I stray from the recipe I'm going to add another third a cup of oil as soon as I get my pan over here it's another third a cup I'm going to add one more egg. Remember, always use large or extra large eggs when you bake. There's one more egg. And to that I'm going to add one box of vanilla pudding. Not the kind you cook, the instant pudding mix. So that's going in. All right. You can add these extras to any uh, cake mix that you buy, but you know if you're getting um, like a chocolate, if you're doing a devil's food cake or a chocolate cake, instead of using vanilla pudding, you would use chocolate <clears throat> pudding instant. All right, so here we go. I'm going to get this all mixed in, and when that gets thoroughly mixed, I'll bring you back. All right, we're back. All I'm going to do is pour this mixture into my 9x13 pan. Now, you don't have to use a 9x13 
your, I'm sure your cake mix box will tell you you can use a round or whatever you choose to use and it will also give you the baking times for the pan that you choose. But I'm going to use a sheet pan and um, get my cake batter in here and I'm going to put it in the oven for the time that it says on the box which is 30 minutes and um, but I'm going to test it after 30 minutes to be sure that it's done and um, then I'll bring you back we'll start from there with the second part hi gang we're back before I go any further with this cake I want to tell you that I'm I made a mistake in the very beginning of the video when I was mixing the two boxes of lime jello with the water I said add two cups of hot water and a cup of cold water it should have been two cups of hot water and a half a cup of cold water and set it aside so that was a mistake and I apologize and another thing is as I was baking this cake it smelled so good I thought to myself why didn't you use coconut instant pudding coconut and lime oh my gosh would that have been great but anyway as it is I added vanilla it took my cake 35 minutes to um, to bake and then I had to let it cool completely now I'm going to take that lime jello and I'm not going to use all of it I poked holes two inches apart on this cake wait till the cake cools two inches apart and I'm just trying to get this lime in those holes that I poked in here oh this looks so good supposed to be done slowly and I'm trying to do it slowly and of course you know uh, this is for St. Patrick's Day which is why I'm using lime jello but you could use any flavor of jello if if you're not uh, making it for something a special holiday strawberry raspberry coconut lemon you know there's a lot of flavors orange Ooh, a lot of flavors of jello I'm trying so hard to wring those those holes I put in here. I'm having a hard time with it. I said make them about two inches apart. I hope I didn't. I'm going to poke some more holes. Just a few. Mm, very moist. very moist delicious cake
I'm not going to use all of this liquid. And I'm wondering why in the world it called for two boxes of Jello. Honestly. I have a lot left over. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do with it. I'm just going to put it in the refrigerator and uh, let it gel. Okay. Now, we're going to, let me put this in the fridge. Um, I'm going to set that cake aside right for now. Sorry about that. I did set the cake aside. And now I've got my mixer out again. I'm going to try to drag it over here. Now in the bowl, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. In the bowl, I've got one can, and I'm using cream cheese icing. One, one jar of cream cheese icing, and one 8-ounce block of sour cream. And I'm, of cream cheese. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. All right, I'm going to get those. The cream cheese has been softened. We're just going to whip these together. Get them good and mixed. I mean, mixed really well. shouldn't take too long. Now, oops. If you if the if you think that it's too too heavy at icing, you can add, you know, a tablespoon or two your choice of um, I'd only add a tablespoon at a time of milk. Um, I don't know. This looks pretty good to me. Looks pretty good. Get that off the sides. We're going to have Sam over here in just a minute to taste this. Let me get it off the beater. Not a whole lot stuck on there, but you know, you don't want to waste anything. There we go. Yeah, that looks, that looks like a very decent consistency. To me. Okay, so there we go. The more I think about it, the more I wish I had used coconut pudding in the actual cake, but I've tasted this one. <clears throat> I've 
got clean hands, guys. I just hate to waste anything. Now that tastes like homemade icing. All right, let's get this off. I'm going to push this back. And I'm going to start icing this cake. Now, I'm going to try my best not to let <clears throat> the uh, the green bleed through but I, you know I don't know if it does it does the best way to do it is not to put your icing all in one place bring it across the cake and then you have less to spread which you know helps helps prevent that dragging motion that sometimes will bring up part of the cake you don't want up Trying to get as much out of here as I can. Let's see. Well, oh goodness. I think that might do it. Now I'm just going to take the back of this spatula. And move the icing around, get it in the corners, you can use a offset icing spatula and I have one, but I've already got this one dirty so see any point in having one more thing to wash. Let's see, I got most of this done here. Plenty of icing. I got that whole cake covered now. If you see if you see any little thin spots just move some icing around and and get them covered I got a little corner over here that's not covered good I think I pretty much got it here, guys. All right, now uh, let's see a spot right here. Enough left on the spatula to fix that, and over in this corner. Okay. There we go. Here we go. Next step is just little green sparkles for St. Patrick's Day. You can go heavy or light. It just depends on 
the way you want your cake. Now, our St. Patrick's Day cake is finished. But, you know, you don't have to reserve it for St. Patrick's Day. You can have it any time you want to. Use a different cake mix. Use a different pudding. But, you know, if you add the pudding, you've got to add the extra egg. Excuse me while I move this bowl. You've got to add the extra egg and the extra oil. So, I'm going to cut you off a minute. Cut a piece of it and get Sam in here to test it. Alright guys. Got my plate ready. This is going to be as much of a surprise to me as it is to you. And actually, you know, I should have let this <coughs> cool in the fridge some so the icing would set. But I haven't done it, so it's not going to look as pretty as it should have. But you can see the little streaks of lime in it. I'm trying not to... Little streaks of lime. It cut pretty. And here's Sam. Here's his fork. Call the law. That looks too pretty to be legal. It's got to be illegal. Oh. You know I'm part Irish. No, I didn't mm, know that. I'm Welsh. Part Irish. Indian and part Irish. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Delicious cake, moist, and um, icing, um, very light, fluffy, and uh, very tasty. It's delicious. goes good together. Plus, it's a beautiful cake. I, you know, if something looks pretty, it makes it taste better. When is St. Patrick's Day? The 17th. Mm -hmm. So we're celebrating a little early. Well, I have to if they want to make this for St. Patrick's Day. Well, they'll, mm -hmm. folks, y'all love this cake. It's very, it's just super cake. <laughs> is, it, is it moist? Oh, yeah. Plenty moist, very light. Ice is delicious. Okay, guys, you heard it from the taster. Thank you for coming in today and spending part of your day with me. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, you take care and God bless. Mmm.